All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank God for your presence this morning. I just muted everyone so that we could hear clearly. Um, uh, I, I would normally give you another minute to say your hellos and, and how are you and everything, but um, but I got some men on the line from the church, and they are going to be, uh, if they're not at the church already, they're on their way to the church because we're feeding our mothers at 8 a.m. this morning. Um, so let us get straight to, to our presentation for this morning. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Um, thank you for continuing to support this prayer line, and let me say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers on the line. Church, Sunday school, Bible study, vacation Bible school, although vitally important to the growth and nurturing of a child, cannot compare to the training that a child receives from home. Extended days at school, after school programs, extracurricular activities um, cannot substitute for what should be taking place at the home. Uh, parents are the ones who should be motivating and influencing their children. Parents should ultimately be the ones who mold and shape their children. In fact, Proverbs says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Um, the verb train up used in Proverbs is also translated dedicate, which expresses a conscious intention, intentional shaping, intentional development, intentional correcting, intentional love, intentional discipline, intentional instruction. The very glue and foundation in a child's life should start at home. When asked, every child ought to be able to say that their greatest influence in life was not modern culture, not the life that they observed, lived out by celebrities, uh, not what happens on social media, but the greatest influence came from home. And for many of us who had the privilege of having a mother in our lives who loved us unconditionally, nurtured us, <clears throat> took care of us, taught us, provided for us, sacrificed for us, consoled us, counseled us, nursed us, listened to us, our greatest influence came from home, and our greatest influencer was our mother. In the words of Kevin Durant, during his 2013-2014 NBA MVP speech, Mom, you're the real MVP. So today, we celebrate Mother's Day, even though mothers should be honored and respected every day that we're privileged to have them in our lives, because there are some who don't have the privilege and wish that mom was still around. So we can't afford to take for granted the blessing of life, the privilege of having loved ones still in our lives. Today, we extol the virtuous role of motherhood. We honor Mama for all that she's done because Mother, Mother's Day was originally designed for children um, to appreciate their mothers and commit themselves to doing for them what they had done, what they had done for them as children. And so I share with you on this prayer line this morning in a very different and unique way about mothers who made a difference in Scripture. The Word of God is full of examples of mothers who went through great lengths to do all that they did and serve as examples of courageous women. Both the Old and the New Testaments share about these women who changed the church and transformed history. These mothers endured some real problems, yet influenced their children to follow God. Let's begin with Eve, who was the mother of civilization, whose name means living. She was the first mother and woman to give birth to a child. She was the first woman to have to endure the pains of labor in childbirth. She was the first woman to have to deal with the murder of one of her sons and the banishment of another son. Ever since Eve, the burden of rearing, nurturing, providing, teaching, disciplining their children has fallen on the shoulders of the mother. Eve shows us that the ability of a child to affect change and transform the world rests in the hands of mothers. Eve wasn't alone. I love the picture of the mother of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses, the protective mother, a woman of the tribe of Levi whose name we find out is Jochebed. While Israelites were held captive in Egypt, Pharaoh decided he would control the Hebrew population by killing all the male children. 
Well, when she gave birth to Moses, she hid him for three months, and when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. She set the child in it and put him along the reeds along the bank of the Nile River and trusted God. Pharaoh's daughter found him in the river. Then Moses' mother became a nanny to her own son, uh, even as he was brought up in Pharaoh's house. Mothers go through great lengths to protect their children. They're willing to protect them from physical danger and even emotional danger. They teach right from wrong and will do whatever it takes to keep their children safe. Then there's Hannah of First Samuel, the supportive mother. Hannah, you may remember, was married to the priest Eli, was barren for many years. She kept praying and praying that the Lord would open up her womb. She told the Lord that if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. God was touched by her heartache and fervent prayer life and responded by giving her a child. She named him Samuel. Uh, when Samuel was born, Hannah dedicated him to God, took him to the temple, left him with the priest so that he could work in the temple. Samuel learned to worship God at an early age and became one of Israel's greatest leaders. Hannah was dedicated to God. She was dedicated to her husband, and she was dedicated to supporting her child. Some of us may never know the kind of support we received from our mothers that got us to where we are today. It's got to be a difficult task to give your child over to the Lord. Take your hands off of them. Turn them loose so that God's purpose and will can be fulfilled in their life. But if we keep on reading, we see in both First and Second Kings sacrificial mothers. The first, who is nameless, appeared before Solomon and told him that she was willing to have her child taken away by another woman rather than to see any harm come to him. We see the widow of Zarephath who prepared to make a final supper for her and her child but was approached by the prophet Elijah who wanted her to use the last meal that she had to feed him. By faith, she followed the instructions of the prophet, and the record is that the oil never ran dry and the meal never ran out. How many times has a mother had to make a faith walk, sacrifice, in order that God will make ways out of no ways? We see the mother known as the Shunammite woman who built a room in her house for the prophet Elisha. She was barren for years, but the Lord opened up her womb, and when she conceived, she had a boy child, and that child died suddenly. But you remember, when the prophet was in town, she took care of the prophet, and so saw Elisha asking him to pray over her son. Her faith and trust in God reached the throne room of heaven, and God raised the boy from the dead. You see, these sacrificial mothers, Remind us in the words of that hymn, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by the angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. Then don't forget the wise mother, the mother of King Lemuel who gave some advice to her son about godly living and how to pick a good wife and a virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. We can't forget about Naomi, who was Ruth's mother-in-law. We can't forget about Ruth, who was the mother of Obed, the grandmother to Jesse, the great-grandmother to David, and the great-great-grandmother to Solomon. How about the advocating mother found in the Gospels named Mary Salome? Her children are James and John. Her husband is Zebedee. You remember she came to Jesus and bowed down before him and asked the master when he got into his kingdom, could one of the sons sit on his right hand and the other son on the left? Who knows why she asked Jesus that? Some suggest it was out of arrogance and that she felt her son deserved to be next to Jesus. Others suggest that it was out of humility that she felt like she knew they would make it in if they were by his side. Either way, 
This woman was an advocate for her children. And somebody needs to know today that our mothers advocated for us, even when nobody else would. There are some places that we've gotten to in life only because mama advocated for us. Mama didn't show stuff, or rather, mama did some stuff that a whole lot of us know nothing about because she was an advocate for us. My mama prayed for me, had me on her mind, took the time and prayed for me, and I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. I know Marvin Sapp was talking about Jesus, but the same could be said about mama. She saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. Mama had your back. You could be wrong as two left feet, but she still had your back because mama was an advocate. Then there is the instructive mother, Eunice, the mother of Timothy. It was Eunice who, having learned from her mother, Lois, instructed Timothy. Paul reminds us, of this in 2 Timothy 1 and 5. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you too. Then he goes on to tell them, stir up the gift that's within him. Timothy became who he was because his mother took the time to impart and instruct him. Thank God for instructive mothers. Instructive mothers taught us, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Instructive mothers taught us, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Instructive mothers taught us, I don't care what you do on Saturday, how late you stay up, where you go out to, you'll be getting up Sunday morning and you'll be in service because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. My brothers and sisters, if we keep reading all throughout the Bible, we will find more and more examples of mothers who have made a lasting impact and serve as historical examples of what motherhood is all about. But I'm closing this morning when I talk about one more mother from the Bible. I'd like to call her the steadfast mother. Her name is Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Steadfast is defined as being resolute, dutifully firm, loyal, and unwavering. Mary received some controversial news that she was chosen as a teenager to be a mother even though she never knew a man, and yet she remained steadfast. She had to tell folks that the baby that she uh, was having was conceived of the Holy Ghost, and even as crazy as that may have sounded, she remained steadfast. She had to walk around town pregnant out of wedlock with the whispers of the people and the false accusations that were being made and brought up against her, yet she stayed and remained steadfast. She had to deliver her baby in a barn, wrap him in rags, lay the baby in a manger, all because there was no room for them in the end, yet she remained steadfast. She had to go on the run because King Herod wanted her child dead, and yet she remained steadfast. She was told at the baby dedication that this child would cause a sword to pierce her very soul and that he would be for the rise and fall of nations, yet she remained steadfast. She had to endure the duality and the dichotomy of him being son and him being Savior at the same time, and yet she remained steadfast. On the sun side, she uh, got preoccupied on the journey home from Jerusalem and lost her son. 
But on the Savior's side, he really wasn't lost because he must be about his father's business. On the son's side, while they were in Cana of Galilee, she told him to do something about the wine at the wedding feast. But on the Savior's side, he responds back to his mother, woman, my time has not yet come. On the son's side, his mother and brothers were at the door of the house in Capernaum as he taught. But on the Savior's side, we hear Jesus saying, who is my mother and my brothers? But them that do the will of my father. Mary was caught between being the mother of Jesus and being subject to the Christ. And through it all, she remained steadfast. On the one side, she had to go through the judgment hall experience. She had to see the one whose diapers she changed, the one who she nursed from infancy, get whipped and falsely accused, spit on and mocked, walked up the Via Della Rosa. She had to watch them put nails in her son's hand and nails in her son's feet. She had to endure seeing them put a crown of thorns on his head and a spear in his side. She watched as every breath he took got weaker and weaker, and she experienced the death of her son right in front of her face. But on the Savior's side, I hear Jesus saying, Happy Mother's Day, when he says, Woman, behold thy son. And to the disciple who we know as John, behold thy mother. In essence, Jesus is saying, Mama, I got to leave you now. And no matter, uh, and, 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 and no matter what may take place, uh, I want you to experience what I set aside for you. Because at the end of the day, no mother wants to ever outlive their children. But Jesus says, since I got to go, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to leave you in somebody's hands. And just like that, he left her in John's hands. Just like you and I um, have been left in Christ's hands, Christ leaves his mama in John's hands. And through all of that, Mary remains steadfast and unmovable. And just like Mary, we too have to remain steadfast and unmovable. Just like you have cared for me and provided for me and taken care of me, Jesus says, I'm going to do the same for you. From this point on, John, that's your mama, and mama, he's your son, and he will do for you what I'm unable to do because I'm not going to be here any longer. And Mary remained steadfast until the very end. She was so steadfast until this mother, early Sunday morning, was the first one at the tomb. But when she got there, she received some good news. He is not here. He has risen, just like he said, come see the place where he lay, and go and tell my disciples what has happened. And you know the story early Sunday morning when Jesus had gotten up with all power in his hands, the first one to be able to share the news of Jesus rising from the dead was his mama. Thank God for all the mothers in the Bible, and thank God for all the mothers in our lives. And I pray that every mother will have a happy Mother's Day and never forget the value of the role of motherhood. God, we're grateful, and we thank you for this day, and we thank you for how you have blessed us. We thank you, God, because you have been better than good to us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, you have brought us safe thus far. And, God, we are forever grateful. Thank you, God, for how you have blessed us. Thank you, God, for how you have taken care of us. Thank you, God, for how you forgive us, God. Thank you, God, for how you keep us. Thank you, God, for this day that we have set aside to honor the mothers in our life whether they're still here with us, whether they've already gone on to be with you, God, we honor them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because for many of us, our first experience, our first connection, our first understanding of you came from our mothers. And God, if it had not been for them, who knows where we would be. So God, we are grateful, eternally grateful 
for what you have done for us. We are grateful for this day. We're grateful for all that you will do. And, God, we pray even as we celebrate mothers. We pray for the rest of our country. We pray for our nation. We pray for our communities and our cities. God, you know what they stand in the need of. God, and we pray that you will meet the need in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for how you continue to make ways. Thank you for how you continue to show yourself strong. Thank you for still being God and God all by yourself. God, we honor you this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray for all the preachers today. I pray for all the teachers today. I pray that you will anoint those lips of clay. Give them a word to share with your people that will encourage some, that will convict others, that will cause correction and change in our lives. We thank you. We bless you. We glorify you, for you alone are worthy of all the praise. Keep us, Lord, and we shall be kept. Protect us, and we shall be protected. God, heal us, and we shall be healed. We claim it now in Jesus' name. We speak those things that are not as if they are in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God. Amen. 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 Amen.